Hello and welcome to the 2019 Paris Air Show. We're here right in front of the Alice, which is a prototype e-vehicle, electric vehicle. As you see, it's a very unusual concept. And it's perhaps indicative of some of the new technology that we'll be seeing at the show this week. One of the things I was thinking of is obviously hypersonics, which has become uh, uh, basically a a new area for air shows, and uh, we'll see what we can find out on that this week. But uh, from your perspective, are there uh, any particular areas that that you'll be focusing on? Well, sure. So uh, KC-46 just flew in. That's not really a new technology, uh, but it's uh, here for the first time. We see some other hypersonic technology in in the exhibit halls. Um, There's a lot of air dominance type technology here, Um, you know, so the Europeans and the Turks and, um, uh, you know, are are showing off some new concepts and fighters, uh, next generation fighters, things that go beyond what what, uh, Europe has today. Um, And uh, we we saw in the AVIC stand uh, a little bit earlier a new missile that we haven't seen before uh, on the JF-17. And so we're going to find out what that is. So Aviation's Alice, of course, is a very interesting concept. It's, it's supposed to be a 650 nautical mile capable nine-seat commuter. It's all electric. It's got three Siemens electric propulsion systems in it, and it's battery powered. It's got uh, lithium-ion batteries in every available space conceivable underneath the uh, the floor of the of the aircraft. Um, the thing is, the batteries take up about half of the overall weight of it. So um, I think one of the main technologies they're looking forward to before they certify this in 2021 is looking at reducing battery weight, increasing battery efficiency, which of course is the greatest sort of uh, prize of all these e-vehicles that are coming out, and uh, basically proving that this can work. It's a pretty long shot, but uh, watch this space. So let's go and have a look at some of these exhibits. So, Steve, one of the highlights of the show from the uh, Air Force's perspective, of course, in the United States is the arrival here at the air show of the uh, first KC-46 that we've seen delivered by Boeing recently. Uh, What do you make of this? Well, you know, it's been a long road to get here. I mean, I think I wrote my first story about the tanker program a few months after the 2001 Paris Air Show. And now the KC-46 is finally here, uh, 18 years later. On the KC-46, the new technology is the remote vision system. Um, you know, this is something that it's been on, on other on previous Boeing takers, like the KC-767 for Italy and Japan, also the A330 MRTT, which is also here from Airbus. Um, but it's, uh, you know, it's a camera display system. You have cameras sit- sitting on the belly of the aircraft, outside the aircraft, and they project an image for a remote operator station on board the aircraft, just behind the cockpit, actually. And that's how they um, uh, direct the fuel boom into the receiver aircraft on this, this type of tanker. Right. So, Steve, one of the long-time jokes, really, in aerospace is that uh, hypersonics is the future and always will be. But, of course, this year we have actually seen some serious de- um, developments in, in the art of the, uh, of the possible, I suppose, with hypersonics. Um, behind us... This is the uh, Stratofly, which is uh, based on the uh, European Horizons 2020 project. It's a Mark 8 um, project, uh, the target being to get to TRL 6 by 2035. And essentially, this is part of trying to develop a uh, passenger carrying capability, uh, which would be able to get from Europe to Australia in under two hours, approximately, or um, provide an initial level of a first stage to orbit for a space, space access. But of course, we're also seeing really the push for the first applications of t- hypersonic technology is really weaponry, um, and in fact, uh, potentially a follow-on to ISR uh, um, and other applications. So, um, what do you, uh, you've seen a few things here, or hopefully will do. Yeah, so the backdrop, is what's going on in Russia and China right now. So Russia claims that they've deployed, uh, or they're in the midst of deploying the Avangard uh, intercontinental uh, hypersonic boost glide system. Uh, China has claimed uh, to have had some success with operationalizing hypersonic weapons. The US is actually trying to catch up right now. In in France, they've actually started their own hypersonic programs. Uh, Just earlier, I think it was in March, um, you know, the the DCGA, the the French uh, Ministry of Defense, announced that they were starting um, 
uh, that they would use a, a, a hypersonic scramjet to replace their existing nuclear cruise missile sometime around 2035. And that, that, they became the first country to actually say that they were going to do that with a, uh, with a, with a nuclear cruise missile. And of course, in terms of propulsion, we've gone. We've also seen beyond scramjet developments, of which there's been very little visibility recently. We've seen other options, for example, reaction engines uh, developing the, uh, the the Saber concept, mm -hmm. and a precooler from that. The technology which could spill into uh, other uh, high-speed propulsion systems too. So now we've just spotted something here right around the corner. So let's go and look at that now, shall we? Uh, of course, uh, no Paris would be complete without uh, a good smattering of advanced propulsion concepts. Um, we've talked already about the rise of the electric uh, vehicle, the EVET -re revolution that sort of already we're witnessing. We've just seen outside the uh, aviation um, Alice. But inside, of course, is where you get a little peek at maybe the real future uh, in terms of perhaps the, what's going to happen as the uh, traditional and conventional turbofan gives way to perhaps more exotic, more fuel efficient concepts of the future. So behind us right here is one from Germany, it's the Ultimate, which is a funded by the European, uh, European Horizons 2020 project. And it's basically integrating a uh, internal combustion engine, like a vehicle car engine, into the core of what would be a turbofan. Um, it's, if you like, a sort of an adaptive engine, but Steve, we're uh, in the US, of course, seeing a lot of progress in adaptive engines for a totally different market. Yes, um, the Air Force uh, and, and the U.S. Navy are both interested in um, looking at new, new kinds of propulsion systems for whatever comes after the F-35 and the F-22. Uh, they're they're frontline fighters, um, and what they've looked at is adaptive cycle propulsion, varying the bypass ratio, varying the compression ratio uh, to get um, potentially 25-30% uh, more fuel efficiency uh, during cruise flight um, and uh, so they can extend the range of existing platforms or even new platforms uh, you know with this more efficient type of technology and adaptive cycle te technology and of course convert that to added power when you need it in a combat situation yeah. and of course let's not forget here in Europe uh, they're also looking um, at very similar adaptive cycles for for example the Tempest program and uh, of course the, uh, the, the French and German program Yes, you're right, and uh, you know I think we're going to see a lot more about that kind of technology throughout the week during the show. So, of course, uh, right here in the, the the core really of the show is the uh, e-power demonstration area from Safran. Thought it'd be interesting to just look behind us here at this display, where they have a turbo generator, which of course is based um, for this particular 600 kilowatt uh, initial model on the Ardidan 3 turbo shaft. They've also got their electric motor with the uh, Ingenious. And of course, there's um, other applications of this, a whole family. The initial one, of course, is the Bell Nexus eVTOL, which um, uh, is they're providing the hybrid system for that. But uh, of course, it's not just uh, commercial. Uh, this has potential military applications, or at least there's some flavor of it, which you could see once in a camouflage setting. It's early days, and the military right now is just trying to think through you know, if this technology matures as people think it's going to mature, how could they start using it? But you know, it gives you an idea of some of the things they're thinking about and how can we use this kind of technology exactly. to do things we couldn't do before. Right. It's almost as if uh, basically the limits of our own imagination. And at this point, who knows where we're going to get with this. But uh, essentially, we're seeing the very beginnings of what could be at the future Paris Air Shows for decades to come.